Today, I'm going to talk to you about insomnia. We're going to cover what insomnia is, how it disrupts normal sleep cycles, and how people with insomnia ultimately go about fixing it. To help you better understand what it's actually like to live with insomnia, I'm going to be sharing my own story and the perspectives of other students who've dealt with this sleep disorder. Insomnia is one of several sleep disorders. Others include narcolepsy, sleep apnea, and restless leg syndrome. Insomnia is characterized by trouble falling asleep and staying asleep, which results in daytime impairments. People can have chronic insomnia, which occurs at least three times per week for at least three months, or short-term insomnia, which occurs in short bouts of intense trouble falling or staying asleep. My insomnia journey starts three years ago, when I was sleeping inconsistently like many college students, but I began to get intense tension headaches on nights when I did not sleep enough. The tension headaches became more frequent over the years and eventually turned into debilitating migraines that impacted my day-to-day -day ability to work and socialize. I began to associate my lack of sleep with these physical symptoms. Last spring, I had a particularly stressful quarter, and I was quite sleep deprived by the end. At this point, I was experiencing headaches nearly every day, and I was quite on edge. My body was tense all the time, my heart rate was high, and I knew I needed to catch up on sleep, but for some reason, I kept getting up very early, and I felt too anxious to get back to sleep. This turned into a vicious cycle. I felt anxious about feeling sleep deprived and therefore it was difficult to relax and actually sleep. At the end of the summer, I experienced fatigue and headaches practically every day, no matter how much sleep I got. I realized that the solution to this issue is quite paradoxical. I had to try to rest as much as possible and take all pressure off myself, but without actually trying to sleep more. To learn more about how insomnia disrupts the normal sleep-wake cycle, I spoke to Nicole Carmona, who's a cognitive behavioral therapist for insomnia at the Stanford Medical School. The number one struggle that I see is putting in so much effort into sleep. And that's pretty tricky because sleep regulation is an automatic process. Um, but we've got a couple of processes in our bodies that do this automatic job of allowing us to fall asleep. So the first is the pressure that you build up to sleep just by virtue of being awake. So from the moment that you wake up, you build this internal pressure. It's like a hunger for sleep. And the second is your body's internal clock called your circadian rhythm. And it runs on a slightly longer schedule than 24 hours a day. So every day you kind of set it every morning. If you think about those watches, like old school watches where you had to wind it up every day, I think of the body's clock as kind of like that. Without that, it can start to drift. So those two systems are really good at working with each other to regulate your sleep, to allow you to fall asleep, to allow you to stay asleep and wake up in the morning when you'd like to. But there's another process that can kind of interfere with that. And that's your arousal system, like your threat detection system. And there are so many different things that can activate your arousal system. It can be worrying, it can be general stress, it can be just the act of falling asleep, bringing up performance anxiety, it can be thoughts about the next day and how hard it is going to be to function. All of those things can show up and those are going to interfere with sleep onset. When your sleep regulation system isn't functioning like normal, you don't get the sleep that you actually need across many nights. This accumulation of lack of sleep is called sleep debt. Sleep debt has harmful effects including fatigue, decreased motivation, mental health issues like depression and anxiety, or daytime drowsiness. And according to our class motto, drowsiness is a red alert. 
These daytime impairments can lead insomniacs into a vicious cycle of being anxious about sleep and then having negative physical symptoms and then not being able to sleep enough, which is what happened to me. But worrying about sleep usually makes it even more difficult. This is a common misconception about sleep. The more you try to make it happen, the harder it becomes. As I became more anxious, I had more insomnia, and then I actually noticed a really drastic difference the day I learned about insomnia and sleep and dreams, because I was like, oh my god, what if I have insomnia? And then I was like, oh my god, this is all in my head, and then I was mad at myself because I was creating the insomnia in my head, so it actually got way worse after I learned about insomnia and sleep and dreams. After I learned about insomnia and sleep and dreams, I would wake up in the middle of the night and then have trouble going to bed for like an hour or two because I'd be anxious to be like, oh wow, I'm like doing this to myself. Yeah, I think a lot of it was just like, I think that I had a lot of frustration and anger at myself, which I was trying to like subdue because I was like frustrated at being frustrated at myself. I think it was like a lot of cycles, and like a lot of like, like jittery, like, I don't know. Yeah, I think it was like a lot of cycles, like a lot of thinking like, oh my god, I shouldn't be feeling this way, or like a lot of this and that. I mean, it was just really hard to, because it's like, okay, all I want to do is sleep. Like, I can physically feel that my body is so exhausted, but I've been laying here for like an hour. I've been laying here for an hour and a half. A lot of it's uh, a lot of frustration, but it's like very subdued, and it's almost like, for me, like kind of half conscious, but it's like, just like being like right on the edge of sleep, not being able to sleep. It feels very spirally, very, um, um, atmospheric or like amorphous. So it is a little bit frustrating and stressful because it's like I feel like I'm digging o I'm digging away at like tomorrow the next day like oh I haven't I, I lost an hour of sleep or two hours of sleep and tomorrow's gonna feel I'm gonna be super tired tomorrow. Um, so it does it feels uh, very tired because if you feel like it's out of your control and you're just um, you're doing your best, but you just have to kind of just like relax yourself and chill, chill out, um, so that you don't um, stress yourself out too much. Generally, the principles that I find really helpful for people are limiting the amount of time that you spend in bed to the amount of time that you're actually sleeping a quality over quantity approach. Waking up at a regular time every day is also something that gets you a lot of bang for your buck in the sense that it's something to effectively push your sleep drive up against, right? So if you start building that pressure to sleep from the moment that you wake up every day, then you get some predictability in how much sleep pressure you're building every day. And dropping the struggle with sleep. That's really the crux of it for me and the work that I do with people is to stop trying so hard to do. If you're not sleeping, what else can you do that's restful? What other strategies can we pull in that are going to allow you to minimize arousal before you go to sleep so that it creates this nice context for your sleep to unfold? What can you do if you find yourself awake in the middle of the night that doesn't involve further trying to sleep because it's like trying to get out of a hole using a shovel. I think it's really important for those of us with insomnia to really have compassion for ourselves. I know that for me, it was difficult to even figure out what was going on with my insomnia in the first place because there were all these competing symptoms that kind of mushed together in this snowball of anxiety, general fatigue, sleep debt, and headaches. And treating it is a longer term, non-linear process. It really takes a lot of self-compassion and just ultimately taking all the pressure off yourself.